What's up, Internets? This is Fuzzy Tolerant Screencast number 14, an update on the GeoPortal project. Excuse the noise while I adjust my microphone here. All right. The GeoPortal project has undergone some changes. Now, I think it was Jeff Atwood that said the worst code he'd ever seen was a code he wrote six months ago. Well, I wrote the GeoPortal project more than six months ago, and that code smelled terrible. So, I have totally refactored the code. Refactoring basically means you're not making functional changes to the software. You're making more internal kind of stuff. But there are functional changes as well. And uh, I thought I'd give you a look at it. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Oh, it moved. Uh, first thing, I host a number of my open source projects on Google Code. Uh, lately, I've been hosting them more on GitHub, and I kind of like GitHub better, and I kind of like Git a little better than Mercurial now that I'm used to it. And that's where all the cool kids are hanging out these days, so I uh, won't be one of them, but I will be near them. So the project has moved to GitHub. If you need to download an old version, I left all the downloads still there. So all the old versions are still there. The project has moved to GitHub. Also, there's a GitHub repo for the GeoPortal project open source template. There is also a, a repo for uh, Mecklenburg County's GeoPortal, which has all the bells and whistles and flying things and, and you know, all of that crap. I did not refactor that code. That code will be uh, uh, coming later. Let's get back to the front page of this thing. Okay. So it is on GitHub now, and it's been, let's talk about the changes. One, as I mentioned, is totally refactored. The code now is like uh, uh, slap your mama pretty. It's all neat and laid out. I used a lot of the neat features. I, I bought and I'm really into sublime text and it has you know linting for your JavaScript and things to make things a lot prettier and neater and I also just generally am a little bit smarter now so the HTML code is super pretty the uh, JavaScript code is super pretty it's much more laid out into small functional decoupled units which makes it easier for reuse and easier for testing if you're into TDD and that kind of stuff. They've totally refactored the code. The CSS styling is so much simpler. All this is like boilerplate stuff. And then from there to there, that's pretty much all the CSS for the site. So it is totally, totally refactored. One thing I did, which uh, you might not like, uh, the last version of GeoPortal had three mapping engines you could use. It had uh, uh, Open Layers and Leaflet and Google Maps. From the GeoPortal project, that template, I've dropped Google Maps. And the reason is, is Open Layers and Leaflet do a lot of things fairly similarly. It's conceptually and design-wise fairly similar. Uh, Google Maps is quite a bit different. In order to pull that in, I had to do a lot of work to genericize it, to use three different mapping libraries, and it just became more trouble than it was worth. It ended up being unworkable. Uh, I mean, well, it worked, but it ended up being a bit of a mess and hard to use for whichever library you wanted to use. So I pulled that out. If you still want this basic kind of map layout, framework. With Google Maps though, you've got the Mecklenburg County's repository online, which right now is still Google Maps. And since Google Maps keeps doing crazy things, like uh, adding, they just added a whole bunch of stuff at Google I.O. Uh, every time I try to pull myself out of it, I go, oh, that hurt. They just add that. Now, now that would hurt if I didn't have it. So that'll, that's Google Maps for the foreseeable future. What else? Uh, the configuration, there used to be a config.js, which was a JavaScript file that basically had a bunch of global variables and configurations. Now it is config.json, and it is a JavaScript object 
that has a few basic things. Uh, uh, base web service, map center, default zoom, min zoom, max zoom, and then your base layers and your your overlay layers. And because we're not including Google Maps now, this file has become a lot simpler as well. You had to add a lot of complexity to do things like put a WMS layer onto Google Maps. So now it is very simple and straightforward. It's a JSON object, very easy to use. It just loads that uh, Synchronously, you can do an Ajax call in jQuery synchronously if you need to, in case you didn't know that. So it's going async false. So it basically waits right here until that's done before it tries executing the rest of the page, which is what we want for a configuration file. So that's different. It's all pub sub. It is. Mm -mm -mm. Talked about pub sub in like uh, maybe the last. Uh, I talk about pubs up at some point. Um, now things are generally subscribed to events or publications. Uh, so when this change selected event fires, um, that function, that function, and that function are all all tied to that. So when you publish, uh, say down here, publish this change selected, all three of those events or, or all three of those functions are going to fire. Now that makes you write decoupled tight functional JavaScript units. Great for testing, great for reuse. The other thing that's really nice about it because of the way it's structured and how I did the uh, mm, 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 mm. I took the PubSub jQuery plugin Peter Higgins made and just tweaked it a bit one of the things I did was this try catch block around a publish function. What that does, if you have, say, four functions tied to a publication, and these are, because you're a JavaScript genius, independent uh, decoupled things, if one of them fails, it doesn't take the other ones with it. So if you're firing five things, and the second one it tries to fire fails, those next three are still going to fire. So it allows your application to be very robust and and take a hit and keep on dragging. So that's pubs up. I also uh, uh, I also hashed the whole thing for lack of a better word. So now when you go find an address you see up here in the URL bar there's this number and that's essentially a unique ID for our master address table which for this app is like the master record and what this is, is the, the, on this accordion over here, ah, this accordion over here, the H3 tag, which is what makes up this like transportation here, H3 tags all have an ID, and that's the ID of the currently active tab. So if you were to go, say, to that address in transportation, you could bookmark this and go back to this page, and it would go straight to that address and that tab. You could email this link to someone and it'll go straight to that address and that tab. And that's kind of awesome. Usually, sometimes you see a permalink. Hey, here's a permalink to this page. Well, that sucks because no one's going to see your permalink and they're not going to know how to bookmark your permalink. This is a much better way to do it. This also gives you some nice kind of, uh, because hash is stored as a URL or a browser navigation event, Say we went to 700 North Tryon Street. I also changed the, uh, the Uber search, so if there's only one match found, it just goes straight to it. So you, now we're at that one. and let, Let's say let's go to the Services tab. Let's go back. Go back to the Transportation, because that was the last event in the URL history. Go back. It goes back to that last address we had. So... Now that is all part of your navigation history too. So you get permanent, uh, very easy deep linking, and you get navigation history so you can go back and forth. That's really cool. So that's why it's hashed. Now, the last thing I'll tell you about, and there's a whole bunch of, of things I changed, but you know me, I don't write these things down when I do. This one's kind of neat. It now has a, a working manifest file. And what a manifest file 
is just manifest and app cache is, is what I have set up for the MIME type for a manifest is it tells the browser that this is an HTML5 web app and it tells you which things it should cache and which things it should pull off the network and not cache. So we're caching like the index HTML, which I think that's automatically cached, but we did it anyway. And some images and some JavaScript. For whatever mapping library you pick, you can cache those objects too if they're local. And everything else, network just have star basically saying you know go go to Starbucks and use your Wi-Fi because you're not going to cache all your tile sets so thing you should know about that first your web server should know what that mime type is app cache I have it so you can name it manifest too and it should tell your the client do not cache the manifest if they cache your manifest you're screwed totally totally screwed the only thing that will fix it for them is uh, is basically if the manifest expires which could you know who knows lying or they will have to go and clear out their cache so before you use a manifest file make sure your web server is, is basically saying excess plus zero second or, or in other words expire immediately or you will be so totally screwed so what that does is kind of neat it lets you control your caching let me show you uh, see if I've got a little window here open let me just reload this page you notice it says application cache checking event application cache no update event saying the the cache the manifest file has not changed therefore all those things we had cached are not going to go be fetched again now that's cool for like you can now use the site offline although you know the tiles won't load so you really can't but it's you have very tight controlling over what cache it's a lot faster for the client this way because they don't have to go check the expiration of all these individual files and then go fetch files and and what have you but be aware if I went and changed script.js it's not going to reload it unless the manifest changes and it just I think it does like a a byte check on the file so what most people do is they just put something up here like I can put v101 it's not really looking at the number and now when I reload this see it noticed that there's a cache update event so it goes back and refetches all those files be aware of that otherwise you'll pull your hair out now besides all the neat caching and this makes it faster for your your customers and whatever what having a manifest does is it tells a mobile thing like an iPad that this is an HTML5 web app so let's do a little experiment here Whoa, gosh I apologize uh, site be here now since this has a manifest when I go to add a bookmark you'll see it has a add to home screen because this is a HTML5 web app now so I'll go to add home screen it'll say that's great it loads the icon I told it to load and that's in the it's like a meta tag it says what do you want to call it I'll just hit add you'll see right on my desktop jizz this like a regular app when you launch it it'll load the site but you'll get no URL bar or any of that kind of browser stuff because it's a freaking app so that's what uh, your manifest gets you. Oh, oh God, sorry. That's what your manifest gets you. So it's pretty cool. And it's there. And that's really about it. It works the same if you want to change from leaflet, which is a default, to open layers. You basically you can comment out this leaflet CSS up at the top. Then down at the bottom, you can comment out your leaflet libraries and comment in your open layer libraries. 
change your manifest so it knows to relook at stuff, and off you go, you'll be in open layers. Let me say, the open layers kids, wow, great job. Uh, 2.12 is the brand new release, and it is really good. The open layers full library is smaller. Uh, what I saw is smaller, significantly smaller than the last version. I started looking around for the four horsemen of the apocalypse to come uh, tearing around the corner. But it's faster. It's easier to do a map configuration, get something up and running quick. A lot of really smart go changes. Congratulations. They also have a light library, which is only like 200 some odd K, which uh, mm, I think think probably works. Uh, I'm not going to try it now. But right now I'm loading the full library which is down to 700 something K. Anyway, that's the changes to the GeoPortal project. You can get them out on GitHub. Uh, fork them, send in code changes, send in hate mail, send in questions, whatever, and enjoy it. Uh, it is 104 degrees outside, but I am going to go out there and try to get to lunch. So, if you're in the Charlotte area and you see someone burst into flames on the sidewalk, that was probably me. Probably me. So, I'll see you next month. Next month, I don't know what I'm going to do, as usual, but I'll think of something. And have a good one.